Hi guys, welcome back to Codemaster Coach, your medical coding tutor. In today's video, we are talking AIDS, A-I-D-S. By now, you probably know that AIDS, if I code it, it's a B20 code, B20. Feel like I'm playing bingo, B20. Okay. So yes, AIDS is B20, but AIDS can be described in other ways. AIDS can be described as AIDS. It can be described as acquired immune deficiency syndrome, acquired immunodeficiency syndrome, age-related complex, ARC, age-related conditions, and HIV infection symptomatic. Remember that, symptomatic. But the first rule of thumb when coding AIDS is that it must be confirmed by your physician before you assign it. So do not assign code B20 without an established diagnosis by your physician. So let's look at about five other ways to identify AIDS and HIV related coding. Z11.4 is screening. Z71.7 is counseling, Z7289 is lifestyle, Z21 is asymptomatic, and Z20.6 is contact or exposure. So let's break each one of these down. Let's go into each one. Z11.4 is encounter or screening. When an asymptomatic patient with no prior diagnoses of HIV infection or positive HIV status, request testing to determine his or her HIV status, use code Z11.4. When the patient shows signs or symptoms of an illness or has been diagnosed with a condition related to HIV infection, code the signs and symptoms or the diagnoses rather than a screening code because it's no longer a screening. Now they have signs or symptoms. So that's Z11.4. Let's look at counseling, Z71.7. When a patient makes a return visit to learn the results of their serology or their AIDS test, code Z71.7 should be assigned as the reason for the encounter when the test results is negative. Now, should these test results be inconclusive, because remember, sometimes that happens with AIDS testing, because they want to make sure, they want to confirm before they tell you yes or no, then um, sometimes you'll get a result of inconclusive, which requires you to go back through the testing again. So should your results be inconclusive, use code R75, inconclusive laboratory evidence of human immunodeficiency virus. Now, Z71.7 can also be assigned as an additional code when counseling is provided for the patient who tests HIV positive. What about Z7289, lifestyle? When a patient is known to be in a high-risk group for HIV infection, then code Z7289 can be assigned as an additional code. Z21, asymptomatic. Asymptomatic is just that A, absence of symptomatic symptoms. Um, when a patient's test results is positive but the patient displays no symptoms and has no related complications and no established diagnosis of HIV infection, then code Z21 is assigned. However, when the patient is under treatment for an HIV-related illness or when the patient is described as having an active HIV-related condition, then code B20 is assigned instead. Let me give you an example, and this is the best way that I can break it down for my students. And, and I'm just using a personal um, analysis, and this is the way that I do it. So if I offend anyone, I apologize. Um, but with Magic Johnson. Magic Johnson tested positive for HIV. However, 
Today he says he doesn't have it because he's never had any um, related infection or condition that relates to HIV. So he's actually a Z21, he's an asymptomatic um, HIV patient. Now if you ever show signs or symptoms or a condition related to AIDS, because remember this, I've heard people say AIDS will kill you, AIDS will kill you. No. AIDS does not kill you. AIDS compromises your immune system, which means it weakens your immune system. And because your immune system is weakened, other diseases and infections can get in. And it's those other diseases and infections that could kill you. Most people, their immune system is built up enough and strong enough to fight it off. But like with an AIDS patient, pneumonia tends to creep in and because their, their immune system is compromised and they're not able to fight it off, pneumonia would tend to kill them. So with magic, he's a Z21. He's asymptomatic. He tested positive, but he's not shown any symptoms or signs of an HIV-related condition. As long as you're not showing any signs or, or symptoms, you're a Z21. But if you ever show signs or symptoms or pick up a condition that is an age-related condition, there are conditions that patients will get because of AIDS, Carposi sarcoma, um, and most recently, um, yeast infection of the tongue. They found that that is a symptom of AIDS. So if you ever start showing any signs or symptoms of AIDS, you tested positive and you start with these, um, an HIV related condition, you become a B20. So you can start off as a Z21 and move to a B20, but once you're ever a B20, you can never go back to an asymptomatic HIV, okay? You can never go back to a Z21. You can go from Z21, no symptoms, to eventually having symptoms of the disease, but you'll never go back to being asymptomatic. And then the final one, Z20.6, contact and exposure. When a patient has had contact with or has been exposed to the HIV virus but shows no signs or symptoms or illness and has not been diagnosed with a condition related to HIV, then code Z20.6 should be assigned. Okay? So that's Z11.4 screening. Z71.7 counseling, Z7289 lifestyle, Z21 asymptomatic, and Z20.6 contact or exposure. Okay, so now that we know the codes for AIDS, how do we sequence these codes? When a patient is admitted for the treatment of an HIV infection or any related complication, B20 is sequenced as your principal diagnoses, and the additional code for the HIV-related condition is coded sep second, because had it not been for the AIDS, they wouldn't have had this additional condition. So the AIDS goes first, the B20, and then whatever other condition, Carposi sarcoma or whatever, would go second. Now when a patient with an HIV infection is admitted for the treatment of an entirely different condition or unrelated condition, that condition is designated as your principal diagnosis because that's the condition that brought them in to seek care. But then you use an additional code B20 to identify the fact that this patient also has HIV. Now when an obstetric or a pregnant patient is identified as having HIV infection, a code from category O98.7, whatever, additional codes, digits, human immunodeficiency disease complicating pregnancy, childbirth, or the purpurium is assigned and code B20 as an additional code. Now, if that obstetric patient tests positive for HIV, HIV but has no symptoms and no history of an HIV infection, then code O98.7 with the additional digits and Z21 is assigned rather than B20 because again it goes back to that asymptomatic versus symptomatic HIV. Okay guys I hope I broke this down 
clearer and as precise as I can for you to better understand exactly what's going on with the AIDS coding. All right. Thanks, guys, and I will see you in the next vi uh, video. Thanks.